Okay, today we're working on the 07 and up Toyota Tundra. Um, this sway bar, rear sway bar kit is the TRD kit. And it actually works beyond uh, 07 to 14. I think it goes up to 21 uh, or somewhere in that range. But essentially the entire kit comes complete. I don't know if these boxes specifically are, are in the kit with the bar or if these are just replacements um, because there is one part number for the whole kit and then there's a part number for that and then a part number for that so the reason I'm doing it this way is because I already had the bar in the kit um, but my problem was all this hardware got rusted all these bolts seized up in here with the um, spacers so it was a bad time and you can purchase the bar. I think that you can get it for somewhere around 200, 180, somewhere in that range um, with a dealer discount. But the issue is shipping uh, just because of the size of the box. Either dealers will not ship it or they'll charge a significant amount. So to combat that, I researched um, the rebuild kits. So I had my original bar sandblasted and powder coated in red which is very close to factory red and then I found this part number here which is PTR 34092 this is the N-Link rebuild kit so it comes with your, your bolts, spacers, washers and then two new N-Links okay and then there's the second kit, PTR113-34091. This kit is for the hardware that bolts the sway bar to the axle. So there's your bushings here, and then your U-joints and your U-bolts. I'm going to give you a little bit of grease in here. But I'm going to talk about my own grease that I have that I prefer for uh, stuff like this. Um, so real simple, you either have a factory tow bar or you don't. So if you follow the ruler here against the frame rail, there is, there we go, uh, there's a little hole here and a bolt that holds the rear tow assembly to the frame. Now if you don't have this, you still have the hole, but you have to use uh, a washer. But if you have the tow bar, this is your washer. Those holes, you're going to want to tap them out, I'm sure. They're M14 by 1.50. And I had a really difficult time getting these out after 10 years. I'm surprised they didn't strip out, they didn't break, because it took quite a bit of force. So I cleaned the threads out already, so it's ready to go, ready to get installed. So just talk about a few tips here, looking at their directions. Uh, I'm not going to actually install the bar on camera because it's pretty straightforward. So typically, uh, blah, 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 blah. So yeah, if you have the, the OEM hitch, the 19 millimeter, there's two bolts, which are the ones I told you up there that are holding the bar to the frame. Remove those, discard them, you don't need them. And then, because uh, you have new bolts. So we do have an OEM hitch. Now the hardware should be installed in the order. So you have the bolt, washer, end link washer, and the spacer. So let's see if we can figure this out. Obviously one side is smaller than the other, so it only works one way. So we have the bolts, we have a washer, and we have the end link and another washer and the spacer okay so this will get bolted right to your frame um, before I do that though I'm gonna use just regular there goes that multi-purpose grease here just regular old grease I'm going to grease this bolt because mine, like I said, is seized up. So you want to keep this greased. 
in the event you ever want to take it off or just good habit in general for the next owner or whatever so it looks like that's it and then uh, you put that in the frame now if you don't have the OEM hitch uh, you're just simply adding another washer on the end of this just like that and then you're installing it but our frame hitch is the washer so that's fine so these will get bolted to the frame up there just like that and they'll hang down and then um, the bottom portion same thing you've got your bolt that comes with the nut on it the lock lock nut so bolt washer bolt washer end link then the sway bar then another washer and the lock just like so and the end link sits between or the the bar sits between the washer and the end link right here same thing in here you want to grease this so this doesn't seize up very simple uh, once that's done on both sides these links are going to hold your sway bar up and then you can uh, rock or rotate the bar to the axle. So starting on either side, you slide both U-bolts on top of the rear axle. So drop these down over the axle. And then it says the left-hand U-bolt should be on the outside of the brake bracket. So outside of the brake bracket for the left hand, and the right-hand side should be on the inside of the brake bracket. So guidelines to follow there. And it says ensure that speed sensor wire and brake lines do not get clamped, obviously. Okay. Now here's the part with the grease. So Toyota supplied this grease. It's pretty, uh, pretty thin. What I like to use is this tub of uh, energy suspension uh, grease. It's quite a bit thicker. And it's really, really good grease for uh, bushings, polyurethane, any performance stuff. So look it up. It's on Amazon. Energy suspension um, grease. Okay, cover that. Um, obviously, the grease is going to go on the inside where the bar sits. You don't need grease on the outside because that's just where it's clamped down. So a lot of grease in there. Okay. And, uh, yep, yeah, that's essentially it. You remove the lock washers and then put this in. And it kind of clamps everything together. Obviously, don't forget the piece that actually holds that bushing. That goes in there, too. And lastly, important part, um, torque. So the end link to the frame... So this top larger bolt, M14 bolt to the frame, that's 84 foot-pounds. End link to the rear sway bar, that's this. These are 48 foot-pounds. And then you alternate tightening the U bolts, and these are also 48 foot-pounds. So you don't want to over-tighten these because it'll bend this, and you could snap the, the nuts off. Not good. So that is it. The most important things, again, to recap, Tap out your holes, M14 by 1.5, uh, because you don't want to cross thread or damage this, pulling the old ones out or pulling the new ones in, if you're in a somewhat rusty climate. And uh, get your energy suspension grease. You can use OEM, whatever, it's fine, I'm sure, but this might um, wash out or dry out a lot quicker than the thicker energy suspension stuff. And then if you want to save some cash and you already have a sway bar, just buy the kit because the kit's a lot cheaper than buying the entire thing with the bar uh, just due to the shipping and the size of the bar. So these, I don't remember how much these were. Probably under 100 bucks for both of those. So thanks for watching. If you have any questions, let me know. If you need part numbers, I'll put them below. Um, and that's it. See ya. And here's the final money shot.
Now I have everything in here loose. Just let the bar kind of sit where it wants to sit. And then work your way down, tightening everything. So the top is going to be 84 foot-pounds, and then the rest is 48. You can round up to 50, that's fine, I don't care. The only thing is you got to install the bar the correct way. There's like a flat uh, top up here. It says to install the TRD logo up. Obviously, I don't have that anymore. I think this is the right way. I'm pretty sure. I put it the other way, and it just didn't sit correctly. So hopefully, this is the right way with this flat top up. And again, just kind of work your way around. <clears throat> You're going to have to use a jack probably to lift up the bar so you can secure the U-bolts on each side. And then again, this is on the outside of that brake bracket. The passenger side is on the inside. And then just hand tighten everything and just kind of let it sit loose in there. And you'll see, I don't want to go under the truck, it's just being held up by one jack. So I'll kind of reach in here and show you. Um, the nuts, the pictures say to put the nuts on the inside. Um, just the same orientation as the top bolts. And then here you'll kind of see where it rests. This U bolt's on the uh, inside of the brake line bracket. And then the bar should be centered with the diff, just like that. And then tighten everything down. So the rear sway bar, if you do a lot of towing or any towing, you'll, you'll notice a significant improvement in stability with the trailer and the load but also everyday driving you'll just notice a bit more stability in the rear I also did the TRD front sway bar and that one I noticed a huge increase in towing stability so it's recommended I would recommend do both the front and the rear sway bar for the most impact but up to you so that's it